guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs, and thank you for watching this video. Uh, today is just a quick Cinema 4D video, and I've been getting a lot of questions, kind of running on the lines of uh, my render settings. Uh, so some of the kind of projects that like I've worked on, I've uploaded to my channel. Um, people have been wondering uh, how how I get such good quality, um, basically rendering in HD, etc., etc. And so today I'm going to be running you through uh, the settings that I use on how to render. Uh, I'll be covering both image-based, uh, like J, J, uh, JPEG, and uh, movie-based, such as MOV or um, AVI. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, here I have just a quick thing that I just made. I'm um, using some of Grayscale Gorilla's um, uh, HD I Like It Pro here. And um, so it kind of got a glossy blue CD. Uh, it's something I rustled up a second ago. It's just basically a shatter on some on, on a scene of D to give it a just jointed look for those who are thinking it may be a font. It's not. Um, but anyway, uh, render settings. Um, in fact, I need to go to file. I'll, I'll go file new. I'll go file new to show you. Because uh, that would have already had my render settings put in, I just realised. Uh, so anyway, just so you've got a square in there. Don't have a spline, whatever. There we go. And other, you've got a great animation going on. And you want to render it. And you want to render it with good quality. You don't want the kind of whole idea of the thing to be downgraded by kind of the, the lack of pixels or, or whatever, the lack of quality. Uh, so uh, what you're going to do is you just want to go render and render settings, control and B. And I'll take you to the general, obviously you want it on full render, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the output. Uh, if you upload into YouTube, I recommend 1280 by 720. Uh, however, it's an, if it's another project that has to fit some certain requirements, obviously enter them in. Uh, resolution 72, I'll leave at that. Uh, I'll leave all the film aspect and the pixel aspect the same. And uh, frame range. Now, th th this is where you change from whether you want it to be an animation, uh, for example, so it's like a movie, or an image. If you want it as an image, you obviously want a current frame, and it'll, be a, it'll render the frame that you're on on the timeline. Obviously, I've got an animation, so it won't change. Uh, that's how you get an image. Uh, if you want a, um animation, you want all frames, and you kind of enter what you want it to, or you just go to manual, and again, you enter what you want it to. Obviously, if you want to extend the timeline, the number down here, check, uh, modify that number to suit you. And under save, obviously, uh, if you save it as a picture, you want a picture format. Uh, so if you save it as a current frame, you want a picture format. Uh, if you want it as a movie, uh, you obviously want uh, AVI or QuickTime or something along those lines. And uh, just say you've got it on uh, QuickTime Movie, go options. And um, you can change the frames, and you can have it on the best, etc. And uh, click OK if you've got it on AVI. Uh, again, you can kind of increase the quality or whatnot. And uh, that's about it. I keep it on 8 bit channel. And um, that is all. Uh, I don't change anything on Moldy Past or Anti Alison. Uh, I've, I've, I've just completely muddled the pronunciation, but I'm not going to go back and correct it. I think you know why. Uh, under options, you know you can change some things. Um, I know for some projects you turn off auto light. Uh, depends. I recommend uh, previewing the thing before altering any of these as it will affect your whole scene. Um, and then what I typically add on is I go to effect and I go to global illumination and I go to effect and ambient occlusion. Obviously this depends what I'm doing. Ambient occlusion what this does is it adds realistic shadows without using lights. Uh, so where you would typically typically get a shadow like in between some typography or whatever, uh, it'll basically provide a shadow with you there. Obviously by uh, putting up the contrast. And uh, what global light, global illumination does is basically a 360 light uh, lights you're seeing quite well. However, for this for global illumination to work, you need to either have a sky in your scene or a light. Otherwise, it'll just be black. And uh, if I'm honest, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can obviously change some of these settings, maximum ray length, you know. I recommend you play about with these. I usually put up this just a bit and uh, just crank up the contrast. Obviously, the higher you have the contrast, the more shadows there'll be and the thicker they'll be. Uh, I don't really like a lot of shadows, so I just keep it uh, roughly around 10, something around that region. Uh, that's what I found looks quite nice. But again, experiment to your will. And global illumination, obviously. You got all these files down here, settings rather. Uh, I usually change it to low and low. 
uh, purely because this saves render speed. If you're on high, it will take, take a long time, uh, especially for an animation you don't want on high, uh, unless you've got some pretty good, unless you've got a pretty good computer, of which I haven't. Uh, so I usually take it to low, and that usually does the job as well. And uh, that's about all. Uh, once you got that done, uh, it's got to do shift and R. Is it shift R? It is shift R, yeah. And uh, just go to uh, render to picture viewer. And there you go, we start rendering. Now, obviously, this is black because, like I said, uh, there's no light in the scene. So just add in a light or whatever, drag it up. And because I've still got global, illumina global illumination checked, it, will, it won't do anything. So I'll add a light here. And then I'll go Shift and R. And there you go, the cube's rendering. And uh, I said on a JPEG format, uh, there you go. Uh, that's Cinema 4D render settings, guys. Uh, please remember to request some tutorials. Uh, I know I keep asking this, but you know, I've got to find something. And I've got to stock up on, stock up on what I want to do. Uh, so leave your suggestions. If I don't do it in, like next tutorial, obviously, uh, post again. Or oh, I might still have plans to do it for the following one. Uh, anyway, it's worth a try. I'm not going to lose anything. Uh, but that's all from me, guys. I'm Connor with Chrome Designs. Thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.